Oh, Welcome to this episode of Diaspora Scholars TV. So today we are actually in Boston, but I, this is Cambridge area. Yes, this is Cambridge, yeah. This is Cambridge. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yes. And we are here to meet Dr. Wilson Endege. I tell you, we keep telling me that you want trailblazers. We have one today. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Fidelis. I've been reading about you so many times. We've talked over the phone. This day had to come. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. I want us to trace your journey. I mean, I know you've been a trailblazer in biotechnology. Yes. You've been, uh, you worked at Harvard, uh, you know, Proteomics Institute. Yeah. Uh, you know, you worked in several pharmaceutical companies, including Takeda. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that yes. is right behind yeah. us. Formerly known as Millennium Pharmaceuticals. Because formerly Millennium Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, acquired by Takeda. Yeah. Acquired by Takeda. Yes. Several oh. years ago. Oh my goodness. Yes. We are talking about a 30 year journey. Exactly. 30, 30 years. years. At least, yeah. 30 years. If you are watching, please, this is Dr. Wilson Ndege, and I tell you, stay tuned because it's going to be a long journey, a long academic journey of success, resilience, and sheer determination. We're also going to see how they are innovating and they are planning to invest in Africa. Indeed, actually, the plans are on and investment is already on. We'll find out in this show what's really good cooking. Uh, courtesy of Dr. Endege and so many other diaspora scholars who are not only, you know, excelled here, but they are also investing back home. So, again, thank you for coming to the show. And thank you. Let's trace your journey. How did you come to the U.S.? Simply, let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, that journey goes back uh, about uh, almost 32 years now, Fidelis. 32 years? Yeah, I came here as a postdoctoral fellowship at the Harvard Medical School, actually Harvard School of Public Health, uh -huh. in a lab that was doing research in cardiovascular diseases. Uh -huh. And uh, that's after I had completed my PhD, uh -huh. which in uh, the, at the Free University of Brussels in Belgium, uh -huh. uh, in molecular biology, mm -hmm. where I was working mainly in uh, parastology. You were in parasitology? I worked in trypanosom uh, uh, sleeping sickness, tryp ah. trypanosomiasis, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I worked in. Uh, that's what my PhD was in, in mm -hmm. molecular biology and cell biology. Mm -hmm. But uh, after that, I decided that I wanted to uh, switch and look at what's happening in the human face disease area. Because this, my, my, early, my earlier work, my PhD work, it was in uh, animal diseases. Mm -hmm. So I did part of my research work at ILRAD, now known as ILRI. Uh -huh. in Kabete, yeah. and, and then I finished it at the Free University of Brussels. And then a year later, I ended up uh, as a fellow at the... Harvard. Harvard, yeah, School wow. of Public Health at the uh -huh. Cardiovascular Research Labs. Oh my goodness, you, you talk as if it was yesterday, but it's a long time. It's a long time ago. <laughs> I know <laughs> many of our viewers probably have not even been born. We are talking at a time when even uh, the current biotech methods were not even invented yet no no how no, are you no, no, using dna at that time a lot of the <laughs> dna we were just using classical methods if you remember <laughs> a, a manual called tom tom maniatis yes and some and some brook uh -huh. a lot of the protocols we used to isolate dna were from that particular you know uh, <laughs> okay. manual i still have a copy of that in you still my have house. the paper copy the paper copy i'll show you one when we get to my house I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I read, you know, some of us got our PhDs, you know, like 10 years ago. But, you know, when we were looking back, we yeah. were amazed at how those methods were still efficient. Yeah. You know, they could be longer. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they were still very efficient. I mean, but of course, today we have very advanced methods. And you've gone through the entire journey from that time yes. to now. We've gone through the entire journey from that time to now. When you, someone hears about kits, you work for a company that produces a lot of, you know, reagents. Yeah. Kits are actually built on those methods we developed at that time. Wow. That were developed by those people. I actually was part of a team when I worked at the Harvard Institute of Proteomics several years back, uh -huh. where we were actually making our own in-house kits because we didn't want to buy them from in vitro gen. They were too expensive. <laughs> wow. You so would make your own kits? Our own kits, yeah. And we will set them up and we will do all kinds of, you know, 96 well, 384 wells, uh -huh. you know, uh, of, uh, you know, processes. By we hand, it was not this robot. No, robotics. we were using robots. Oh, okay. you're using robots? We were using robots. Oh, we wow. had moved not robots at that time. But, uh, you know, I've seen it all happen from the test tube to 
96 wells to 384 wells to 1586 wells and uh, you know here we are here we are let's go back to Africa to Kenya where were you born how did you it's very important to our viewers because this is the Aspora Scholars TV. Yes. And uh, many of our viewers range from people who are still in Kenya, very young people, mm -hmm. to people who are trying to even start, you know, startups, you know, yeah. like the ones you guys are pioneering and yeah. the ones you've started before. Yeah. So let's go back home and find out where were you born and, uh, you know, your academic journey even before you went to Belgium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Western Kenya mm -hmm. in the present Vihiga County. At uh -huh. that time we used to call it Kakamega District, <laughs> Western <laughs> Province. It was, it was uh, such a big district. Yeah, that's where, where, where I was born uh -huh. uh, in, the 50, in, in the 50s, 1956. Uh -huh. And uh, I grew up there and went to school, uh, one of our local schools, uh -huh. uh, up to Standard 2. Uh -huh. And I uh, think uh, that's... By a local school, you mean which school? I mean, I mean Hombala Primary School. Oh, you went to Hombala Primary Hombala School? Hombala Primary School. It has now a secondary school. That is in it... Vialo. Vialo, yes. You are surprised I know the place. I'm actually very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> that's Vialo, yeah. The Vialo market is just, you know, very close to Hombala. You went to Hombala Primary School? That's my school. That's where my home is. After, uh, during break, I'll tell you how I know Vialo Secondary School. Oh my God. <laughs> a lot of my nephews and nieces have gone to Vialo Secondary School right uh -huh. now. Yeah. They're, they're doing very well out there. They're doing very well yeah. out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So which secondary school? So after from Hombala, where but did you go? After Hombala, actually, I, I went to Hombala to Standard 2. And then my parents moved to Nairobi. Uh, my mother decided to move us to Nairobi. Uh -huh. We stayed with my dad and we now went to a uh, school in Kasarani. Uh -huh. called Kasarani Primary School. Oh, wow. Where I started Standard 3. And that time there was no Kasarani Stadium? There was no Kasarani Stadium. That <laughs> was all a Mzungu Ranch. It was a Mzungu Ranch? Ranch. We used to call him Mr. Mkonde. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was all a ranch. <laughs> it was just a ranch. There was nothing there. Yeah, there was nothing there. Nothing developed there. He, he had dairy cows, and uh, that's what we saw all the time. Mm -hmm. So my father worked at a company called Concrete Pipes. Mm -hmm. They were making uh, pipes, you know, for sewer and all that. Yeah. And also, you know, panels for building. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I went to school there and f did my CPE there in mm -hmm. uh, 1972. Mm -hmm. And then actually 72 years. Yeah. And then I went to Form 1 in Aquinas High School. Oh, wow. That was a good in school. In Bahati, in, uh, you know, East yeah. Eastlands. Yeah. yeah. Where I actually got really trained very well uh, yeah. and uh, there were a lot of uh, Catholic uh, brothers. Who and there were many school. white students at that school? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's where I went to school and uh, I took pure science as they called it those days. MPC? Um, yeah. Oh, uh, oh no, you did biology? I did biology too, yeah. Uh -huh. But that was uh, for my O levels. Okay. Which I, I asked. I'm sure you <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to go to Strathmore uh -huh. uh, for uh, A-levels, A -levels. but they didn't offer me a uh, boarding place, so uh -huh. I decided, no, uh, I want to go to a boarding school. I'm tired of day school. Uh -huh. So I ended up at Kanelotunga in Mosocho for oh, my from wow. five and six. Wow, wow. Then okay. from there, I ended up at Nairobi University. I'm sure you got... Um, what was the grade in that time? Principles? What? I, yeah, I, I, I got uh, two principles. Two principles. And two subsidiaries. Wow. Call them two B principles. Yeah. And uh, it was very interesting. I wanted to go to medical school. Uh -huh. But uh, I think there was a strike in the school and I was somehow implicated. So. You are implicated because you are involved. <laughs> All <laughs> change leaders. Because I walked in front of every Form 6 class. Uh -huh. And they said this is one of the leaders. So they suspended me for almost two terms. Two terms? So when they were doing biology practicals, I was not there. And you still excelled in the exam? I, I scored very well in chemistry and mathematics with Bs. But uh, when it came to biology, I scored very well in the theory and I got a simple pass in the practicals. I could not get... Oh. Yeah. my principal so that I could go to medical school. Oh, that's how so I that's, ended up. That's, you know. <laughs> that's how you miss going becoming a medical, medical doctor. doctor. <laughs> but you ended up now becoming a biotechnology specialist. Yeah. Producing groundbreaking medicines, yeah. vaccines, mm -hmm. 
You know, some of our viewers have no idea that medical doctors <laughs> don't even know the medicine they are giving to the patients. <laughs> yes, yeah, so th that's, yeah. uh, that's, that's, how, that's what led me to science. Okay. And I became a student of biochemistry and uh, organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. Loved them. Did so you went to the University of Nairobi? Nairobi, Nairobi University, yeah. uh -huh. Chemistry and Biochemistry Department. Uh -huh. In Chiromo? Yeah, in Chiromo. Uh -huh. I did my master's there too. Oh, in you did enzymology and protein chemistry. Oh, really? Yes, at Nairobi University. Yep. Then, you, uh, know, uh, you know, when you say so, some t people wonder, <laughs> there were master's programs at that time for things like enzymology. Yeah. That, which year was that? I actually graduated in my master's in uh, 1987. 1987? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And immediately I'm back to my, on my PhD. There was no break? There was no break. So you got a scholarship at that time yeah. to go to Belgium? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was actually working on uh, enzymes. In, uh, I was working on enzymes uh -huh. in, um, in the test supply. Oh, in test supply. Tri actually, the trypanosomes. Actually, yeah, essentially the test supply itself. The, 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 itself. the insect itself, yeah. Uh -huh. And we were looking for enzymes that were actually making the blood not clot when they suck blood. Hmm. Yeah. So that we could manipulate those, make them clot. That was the, the theory behind that thinking. Wow. And then I transitioned to the parasites for uh -huh. my PhD. So at that time, was ISIPE established at that time? ISIPE was established at that time. ISIPE was there even when I was uh, undergrad an undergraduate at Nairobi okay. University. Okay. Yeah. So there you go now, you went to uh, Belgium. So which year was that, 88? So I went to Belgium uh, in 90, 91, 90, 1991. 90, yeah, I spent two years there because I had done part of the work, research work at Ilri, or uh, Irad okay. Kabere. Mm -hmm. So I went there to finish up the research work and do the write-up, uh, finish up the writing, right, study the writing. So I spent two, two more years there doing some of the uh, cell biology work that was related, but I studied the cytoskeleton mm -hmm. of the trypanosome and uh, wow. we were more interested in why it was so unique and so different that if we could develop drugs that would target it. Oh my goodness, you were elaborate all those years, you are still elaborate yes. even. <laughs> Yes. So, viewers, we are talking to Dr. Wilson Endege, a trailblazer in biotechnology, molecular biology, name it. He has dealt with even viral diseases. He has, he's actually has five patents. Uh, he has five U.S. patents, I tell you. Yeah. He's a great innovator. And uh, you know what? We are not done. In part two, he'll tell us more about how they have started a company called called Daktari Biotechnology da in Kenya. Daktari Biotechnology. And we are setting it up here also to do some of the work here, Daktari Biotechnology Company. Daktari Biotechnology. Yes. So that is, a, you are the founder and CEO of Daktari Biotechnology. Right now, yes. I'm the founder and the CEO with the other people like uh, Professor Idagwa. Professor Idagwa. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the Nebraska Medical Center. He's uh -huh. also a co-founder. There is Bernard Ayanga. Mm -hmm. There is Ernest Mungai, who is a mechanical engineer, but uh, he brings a lot of knowledge about finance and funding. Uh -huh. Talk a little bit about that. Uh -huh. Then there is also my uh, colleague that I worked with here at um, Mass General Brigham, uh, building the you know the vectors for expressing proteins mm -hmm. in uh, baculovirus and baculovirus mammalian cells, which is a technology my friend developed. So, so you are combining the technology developed and the technology developed by Dr. Benson Edagwa. Yes. So okay. Dr. Benson Edagwa's technology specifically focuses on small molecules, uh -huh. uh, which we call uh, the pharmaceutical drug, the small molecules, uh -huh. the chemical, chemical drugs. Okay? Chemical drugs. Exactly. And uh, uh -huh. he's more on that. He's a synthetic organic chemist, as you've heard. Yeah. And me, my technology focuses more on the biologics uh -huh. or biosimilars okay. or protein-based drugs. So like, for him, it's small molecules, yeah. you, you are on large molecules. Yes, yeah. but uh, I have to say that uh, actually uh, uh, six, seven years ago, I had co-founded a company with some Chinese friends here called Yukon Pharma. Yukon Pharma. Yeah, and we were actually working on small molecules uh -huh. in, um, in cancer. 